self-checkout is one of the greatest scams in modern history. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how it happened and why it deserves to fail. The first self-service grocery store was opened by Piggly Wiggly in 1916 and located in Memphis, Tennessee. Before this point in history, all grocery stores were full service, just like those full service gas stations that you've probably once heard about where someone else pumps gas into your car and even checks your engine oil while you wait. Every grocery store customer was very carefully taken care of. Customers would simply call in their order ahead of time or provide their shopping list to the clerk at the counter, who would then collect all of their items from the shelves and then pack it up to go for the customer or to be delivered. There were many advantages to this system for the customer since each person would get one-on-one -on -one service from another human being and the store's counter clerk would become a product expert for each customer or even a close friend over time. Another advantage was that it was very easy to prevent theft when customers never even touched the product until they have purchased it. However, the store owners quickly figured out that the biggest downfall of the full service model was the inefficiency of labor for their employees. Having one employee required to help fulfill the order of just one customer at a time wasn't very cost effective after all. So naturally, stores eventually saw this as mainly being beneficial to the customer and not their own profit margin. But then Piggly Wiggly came along and changed everything with their innovative self-service model, which was created by a man named Clarence Saunders. By offering shopping baskets and open shelves, Clarence gave customers a newfound freedom that they absolutely loved. And to make things even better, he promised lower prices in exchange for their free labor. It was a revolutionary change for grocery store customers, who could now have open access to the entire store and collect items of their own. People would dress up in their best attire to go to the grocery store and do shopping while mingling with friends and neighbors. It became a social event just to go out shopping, and customers could still get their much-needed corporate human interaction from the cashiers and baggers while checking out. In return for giving customers their newfound freedom, stores could now save money on labor by making their unpaid customers pick items off the shelves instead of their own employees. The self-service model was so successful that it wasn't before long that all remaining full-service grocery stores either converted or went out of business. The first recorded concept of the grocery store self-checkout machine originates from a guy named David R. Humble. And the legend goes like this. David was once standing in a long checkout line at a Kroger store back in 1984. The customer in front of him in line grew impatient and frustrated with the situation. The customer eventually snapped and began scanning his own items at the checkout lane like a lunatic. This gave David the idea that customers could scan their own items and relieve the congestion at checkout lanes. He also happened to be a product developer for an electronics company, and after many years of prototypes and testing, the first self-checkout machine was born. The work of David R. Humble eventually resulted in the founding of a company called Check Robot, who built and installed the very first checkout machine at a Kroger in Georgia in 1986. Here is a picture of a machine from that era, although the self-checkout experience back then was a bit different. Customers would scan their own items, print a receipt, and go pay at a human cashier. This is likely because people still paid with analog money like cash and checks. But of course, the self-checkout machine wasn't the first invention selling products with minimal human interaction. That idea started in 1883 with the invention of the first vending machine. The computer age had finally arrived and enabled a modern solution for self-checkout, which quickly caught the eye of corporate America, who instantly saw something more nefarious. Grocery store companies eventually realized they could save even more money now by having customers not only pick their own items from the shelves, but check out. Take a look at this LA Times article from 1987, where automated self-checkout machines were praised as a revolution in the supermarket. According to the article, Kroger's initial interest in the self-checkout systems was simply to speed up the whole process. But if you read a little further, you'll see that even in 1987, they were talking about eliminating human cashiers. 
And notably absent from the article is any mention that the cost savings will be passed down to customers. It wasn't long before self-checkout massively exploded to the point of becoming a societal norm. The explosion of self-checkout machines didn't just affect retail stores, expanding into the food industry where yet more human jobs have been eliminated. The self-checkout model has also been greatly boosted by the world's transition into a cashless society, which is the era that we all now live in. This poses a major advantage for self-checkout machines, since not handling cash can mean less mechanical parts that can break. In fact, self-checkout machines that support cash are becoming more rare and rare each day. Check out this Home Depot machine that still allows it. Companies like Whole Foods have taken it even further, like this machine that allows you to swipe the palm of your hand as a form of payment. The question now becomes what comes next? How long is it until robots simply replace the humans? Like at this sushi restaurant, where a conveyor belt delivers your sushi and a robot will bring your drinks and other items. Even the dishwashing has been automated. Although, to be fair, Japanese conveyor belt sushi restaurants were originally invented due to a lack of staffing and not just corporate greed. Some companies who have built their reputation upon delivering a high level of customer service, such as Chick-fil-A and In-N-Out Burger, have paid attention and so far have resisted installing self-checkout kiosks at their stores. Companies implementing self-checkout technology all have one clear goal, which is to eliminate human interaction and costs. Because having robots for employees means paying for less health care, worrying about less people calling in sick, and not having to provide benefits. It also means that the employees that they do hire can be hired at a lower rate since they don't need to be trusted to handle cash. However, there is one huge problem. It turns out that human beings are willing to steal from robots much more often than they actually willing to steal from other human beings. Retail theft has absolutely exploded in the last few years. And to put into perspective just how bad things are, a recent survey showed that nearly one in three Generation Z shoppers have admitted to shoplifting while going through the self-checkout line. Walmart has now admitted to using AI-powered cameras that are designed to detect unscanned items being bagged by customers and even cashiers. In fact, retail theft as a whole has become so bad lately that many stores are actually beginning to lock up items like toothpaste, baby formula, and deodorant. Customers are now being required to get an employee just to remove an item from a shelf, which is pretty ironic when you consider the history of self-checkout and full service. In a hilarious twist of irony, there is now something called a freedom case. This is a machine that allows you to use your cell phone to unlock a store shelf and remove the product. Even Costco has experienced problems with expanding self-checkout in their store, with more customers using membership cards that do not belong to them, which is easier to do with self-checkout than a human cashier. Many retail stores have gone from having a few optional self-checkout lanes to now having no human cashier lanes at all. Unfortunately, this is the point where self-checkout machines have become more of a mandatory thing instead of a matter of convenience for those who choose to use them. The concept of self-checkout was sold to consumers as an idea of convenience, something that could eliminate lines at the grocery store. But now it's apparent that it's mainly just a way to get their unpaid customers to do all the work which of course allows them to save money by eliminating human jobs. So next time you're at the self-checkout line at Walmart, just remember that you're actually working for them for a few minutes. But don't worry, nobody will know because you're not actually getting paid for it. You don't even get one of those cool blue vests. Thank you for working at Walmart. Have a nice day. The evolution of grocery stores has taken place in essentially three different phases. The first phase was full service, the second phase was self-service, and the third phase is now self-everything. The good news is that some businesses have admitted that self-checkout really isn't so great, and have even mentioned scaling back on it. Companies like Five Below, Dollar General, and some other retailers have already announced plans to add more human cashiers to their stores. A study from January of 2024 revealed that customers actually do not enjoy being unpaid employees, forced to scan and bag their own products. In fact, according to this study, customers feel more rewarded and more loyal to stores that offered human cashiers. Which makes perfect sense, because being a customer shouldn't mean that you are forced to do free labor for the store that you're shopping at. 
It's like eating at a restaurant, paying, and then being forced to wash your own dishes. The bad news is that our self-checkout society will likely never reverse at this point. Companies are just far too invested in this technology at this point, and they know that many customers really have no alternative but to shop at their stores. The cost of living has absolutely exploded in recent years, and it is unfortunate that corporations are just not interested in providing affordability. Instead, they seem more interested in eliminating human jobs, because apparently they see human workers as an unnecessary expense. So next time you're out shopping, consider using the human checkout lane and saying hello to the cashier. Because before long, the human checkout experience will be a thing of the past, just like the full-service grocery store.